Hey everyone, Seth at Hub City Vintage, and today we're going to take a double-signed dive into a piece of Seiko Diver Royalty, the 6306 7001 Scuba Pro 450. I know we've done some pretty thorough rundowns on the 6306 and 09, so I'm going to really focus on just what sets this variant apart. If you want to know more about these movements specifically, take a look at our Building a Better Turtle and Seiko 6309 versus Citizen 52 videos. They cover quite a bit of what might be missing here. All right, let's get into it. Endorsements are nothing new, and one of the ways that happens in the watch world is for an equipment company or an outfitter to approach a watch brand or vice versa and to request a watch or series of watches that said company hopes will best represent their brand. This often includes adding the company's logo to the dial. When that happens between two beloved and trusted brands, it results in the orological magic known as double signing. For divers' watches, there's the Comex Submariners and Sea Dwellers for Rolex, the Aqualung US Divers Shark Hunter for Doxa, and for Seiko, the Scuba Pro 450 Turtle. Now there are no shortage of mysteries surrounding this reference, but I can tell you what I do know and share some other best guesses. If you've found your way to my channel, then you likely already have a pretty good handle on who and what Seiko is, but you may have never even heard of Scuba Pro until today. Founded in 1963 by Gustave Dallavallee, then the U.S. representative of Beauchat, a French diving and spearfishing outfitter, and Dick Bonin, who was apparently a complete badass. Not only was he an academic, but he earned collegiate scholarships in swimming, football, baseball, and boxing. From college, he went into the Navy where he served as a SEAL and a member of the Underwater Demolition Team, or UDT. He also served as a submersible operations officer and was charged with testing emerging dive gear for the Navy. Bonin and Dallavallee joined forces and surrounded themselves with the best engineers they could find and invested everything they had into R&D to produce the best possible diving equipment. This was a recipe that eventually led Scuba Pro to become the top dive equipment manufacturer in the world. That might be more history than you needed, but I think it speaks volumes that when looking for a diver's watch they stake their name on, they chose Seiko and the JDM variant of their third gen 150 meter diver. What might say even more is that they didn't ask Seiko to change a thing. In fact, the only difference is the Scuba Pro 450 logo on the dial and the dial code. There aren't many records to indicate just how many Scuba Pro models were produced, but it would appear they were ordered in a single batch for each of the years 1976, 1977, 78, and 79, and then it looks like maybe a final order in 83. The total number produced is guessed to be less than 10,000. Compared to its export counterpart, the 6309 7040 and 49, the JDM 6306 Scuba Pro 450 had 21 jewels rather than 17. The day disc featured kanji and English, and a hack lever allows for second setting. To give you an idea of just how truly rare they are, this stellar example is only the second I've ever seen in person in almost 10 years of specializing in vintage Seiko. The first one was just last week. Believe it or not, they both belong to the same client. And no, I don't think he's interested in parting with either one of them. If you do decide to hunt down your own, please keep in mind that counterfeits abound. So be careful and choose your seller as carefully as you choose your watch. Since Scuba Pro had Seiko ink the dials in-house, authenticating a genuine example is that much easier due to the consistency throughout production. I can say that I've yet to see an authentic 6306 dial with an added Scuba Pro stamp. It seems to be an all or nothing affair. This means that for the most part, a genuine dial is probably reflective of a genuine Scuba Pro 450. That said, anything is possible. Here's some things I look for. The first is an easy one, the case back number and serial. Most counterfeits are 6309, 7040s, and 49s, and it will say so on the case back. A genuine Scuba Pro will always be a 6306, 7001. Though anomalies have surfaced on occasion, the serial number should start with a 6, 7, 8, 9, or apparently a 3, as these are widely believed to be the years in which these variants were produced. A note about the 83 serial. My guess is that these dials were already produced and held until needed, as the images I've seen show the 83 dial to have a SUA logo, so I'd be curious to get a look at that dial stamp. If the case back is correct, next we'll take a look at the dial, but I'm going to hold off on that for just a moment because I'd like to get this one out of the case and we can do that without the glare of the crystal and we can remove the hands and really take a look at some of the detail.
there are details that a counterfeiter would have some serious trouble replicating. Uh, I'm going to pull the hands so that we can have an unobstructed view of the dial, but I wanted to mention something first that I see come up quite often and I get a lot of questions about it. It's not necessarily indicative of the hands having been replaced uh, or being aftermarket if the luminous material in the hands and the dial are not the same color. Often the dial uh, luminous plots, the hour, the hour plots will age differently than the hands. It's just the way it works. Uh, I, I've seen it to varying degrees on 6309s and 06s and even other divers uh, with Seiko. But I can tell you that it's not uncommon for there to be bright white hands uh, and then creamy or sandy or khaki luminous markers on the hours. So don't let that throw you as a detail right away. Certainly a good question to ask, but it doesn't always mean that the hands have been replaced. Here you can see that we have pretty uniform color between the markers and the hand luminous. These earlier dials have a pretty uniform stippling in the luminous I've yet to see recreated and of course the dial code should read Japan 6306 and 700 JT as you can see here. I'll even bring it up a little closer so you can get a better look there. 6306-700JT. Uh, now, as far as the stippling in the luminous, it is, it's pretty fine, um, but if you see it under magnification, it's pretty easy to make out. I will post a picture of it magnified here so that you can get a better idea of what that stippling looks like, but it's very uniform uh, and just looks like small dots, kind of like pointillism across uh, the surface of the luminous material. On the counterfeits I've seen, the Scuba Pro S logo is typically a solid color throughout, and that's not so with the genuine S. There's a gradient effect that gives some dimension along the left edges of each section. And the borders of the S logo should be very crisp, and there are three distinct sections that make up the S, and at no point do they touch uh, on any of them. They are clear defined uh, sections of each of the S there, the tail, of course the arrow at the top, and then the wave in between. Also, because the white ink used is not very thick, the black of the dial dampens the white enough to create an almost blue color when compared to the white ink framing the plots. As you can see here, it's almost a almost like a gray blue, and the white around the plots, uh, around the the crest at the top, and uh, on each end of the bell, you can see is a, a much whiter color. Now I have bright lighting here, so it's going to skew the color just a bit, but it, you can definitely see the difference in color. That sort of gray blue of the Scuba Pro 450 versus the white around the uh, around framing the round plots and even again the tails of the of the bells there. Most counterfeits use a heavier ink that makes the lettering a bright white throughout. Now, as I mentioned, you know, I have never seen a genuine 6306 dial with a uh, a fake or an aftermarket uh, stamped Scuba Pro 450, so it's helpful to know what to look for when you're looking at these dials as well. Of course, uh, if we want to take a look at the uh, water resist here, you'll you'll note that, and I'll try to get close enough to see, that's actually the, the color of the ink there, uh, which typically starts as red, uh, often fades to an orange or yellow, but that's going to be painted over white, sort of a white silver um, paint underneath, and you'll be able to see the edges of those letters. If you uh, use a loop or magnification, you'll see that that's, the color is actually over top of white. And of course, you want to look for that reflective uh, properties in the, in the silver paint, in the 150 meters there. Of course, anything out of alignment or if it doesn't look right, it typically is not going to be. Uh, crisp edges on the SUA logo, I know I've mentioned that several times in the past. Um, basically, parallel lines on the top and, and bottom portion there, those should line up pretty straight. You get a nice even circle in between. Uh, you, you know, if it's a sloppy SUA logo, that's pretty much a dead giveaway. And of course the Seiko at the top, nice crisp uh, printing there. And again, in a reflective silver uh, ink. Of course, look for the beveling on the day date window. Um, if it doesn't have the kanji day, obviously that's a dead giveaway. Uh, but I have seen people mention that spacing between the day and date discs is sometimes a giveaway. I don't know where that uh, generated from. I'm not sure where that came from, but typically there'll be some type of space. I mean, if they're touching, it could likely cause drag. So there, there will likely be some small gap there, uh, but you know, look for your kanji day wheel uh, as well. That's a, another easy giveaway. Um, 
I know that there are aftermarket versions of those um, available now, but again, if everything else looks good, it's just one more confirmation uh, that you can use. I'm also going to take this dial off of the movement here. We'll get a look at the back. Hopefully, uh, this is the first time I'm taking this watch apart. I'm going to be servicing it for this client. So uh, we'll get a look at the back of the dial and see uh, if there's a, uh, a dial stamp uh, for a production date of the dial. And we'll see how closely it matches the, uh, the serial number on the case back. Also, uh, you know, take a look at the case components. Take a look at the bezel insert in the case and the case finishes. Uh, anything you can use to authenticate the watch as a whole will also go a long way in, in, uh, in authenticating, you know, specialty variations such as the Scuba Pro 450. If you look at the bezel insert, you can see, and it's, this is a, especially for these earlier turtles, the, the bezel insert was a textured matte black. You can see in the light there that there really is sort of a grain to it, almost a sandblasted finish. And of course you're gonna have, a, again, that same reflective silver finish uh, in the markers. There's not gonna be any tails on the 10 there, just one straight line for the one and the zero. Uh, but a, a genuine bezel, once you get used to looking for them, they, they become pretty easy to spot, especially if something's wrong. You wanna have that large pip there in the, in the triangle. It'll have a flat acrylic lens. The luminous will actually be inset. It'll be it'll sit behind that lens, so it looks like it should be. You know, there should be some depth there. Anytime you see the luminous sitting on top of the bezel, uh, it's likely a, a, an aftermarket bezel, or at least the luminous has been replaced. But you can see this is a really nice example of this case. Uh, you can see the the circular brush finish there uh, along the edges there. The corners are nice and sharp. Um, just throughout, this is exactly what it should be. A bit dirty, but it hasn't been cleaned yet. I'll take care of that. But, you know, just further, again, further confirmation that um, if, if everything else looks good, uh, then that can sort of bolster your confidence about what you're looking at as far as a, a specialty dial like this one. And with the dial removed uh, and turned over, this is the reverse side of the dial. We can see an 8 and a D there. So that's going to be uh, December of 1978. We've got a 1, 9. So let's do that math. Uh, December of 78 versus uh, January of 79. That's just two months. So it's well within tolerance uh, for mating a, a dial and a case. Uh, scared me a bit there when I saw the different uh, year number, but yeah, didn't realize that was much closer than I initially thought. So w there we go, one, uh, one nine, uh, January of, of 79 versus our uh, uh, December 78. That's a very close production and typically the dial uh, in my experience, uh, is is often uh, earlier than the case. So that's just another uh, great piece of confirmation that what you're looking at here uh, was originally uh, put together together, and uh, and that's always some nice confirmation as well. As far as the movement, uh, it should have 6306A and 21 joules on the auto wind plate. Uh, of course, uh, with that uh, removed, uh, you can see. Uh, the additional four joules uh, that make up the difference between the 17 joule and the 21 joule of the 6306. Whereas uh, 6309 is going to have a metal joule hole here for the center wheel uh, and the third wheel, and you get basically one joule for the escape. Uh, here we've been upgraded, we get uh, diafix assemblies which is a, a whole joule and a cap joule for both the escape, so it gets one added. Uh, and the third wheel gets two added for the jewel and the cap jewel, and then we get an additional jewel here for the center wheel. In addition, uh, we do have a hack lever. Let's see if I can get uh, a look at that for you. Um, I might be able to show you at least a portion of it. Yeah, there you go. So right through this port here, you can see that leg. Uh, and the way this works is you'll have a, a portion of, of uh, uh, the lever will go up and into the clutch wheel there with a line and a channel. Uh, in the stem and so that when you pull the uh, stem and crown out to the time setting position which it is in now yep um, you can actually see that lever move in there there you go um, there's another leg on this side uh, that travels this way and uh, a little foot that rests against the balance wheel in the time setting position to stop the movement altogether uh, and allow for seconds setting uh, so there are your main differences, obviously, there in the movement.
Even with all the information uh, shared here, it can still be a daunting task to try to authenticate a watch through uh, images alone. Uh, the more experience you have with handling these watches, the easier it becomes over time, but nothing will replace having it in hand and having a good working knowledge of the details and the nuances to look for. Um, but I hope that you enjoy this video. It gives you some frame of reference I uh, hope that you enjoyed getting a closer look at and some of the history around the Seiko Scuba Pro 450. Um, of course, please uh, leave any questions or comments that you might have below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you did enjoy this video, please give us a like or even better, consider subscribing to our channel. You can also join us over at Patreon where $7 a month gets you access to exclusive content, comprehensive rundowns of all of our upcoming inventory and more. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next one.